And we're live. Hi, Dan. How are you? Yeah, fine, Mike. How are you doing? Not too bad. And uh, this is for Rob. You know who you are. I blew away and got rid of the countdown. So, <laughs> okay, it's one of our marketing guys. So. That's a cold. It's a cold open. Then we should have something <laughs> like a Saturday Night Live skit pre-planned or something to, uh, uh, you know, live from uh, VA3 MW. It's uh, Facebook Live. I don't know. It's, it's uh, Chevy like Chase uh, in the Land Shark. You remember where they? I mean, we're really oh, dating yeah. ourselves. Land Shark, right? Land shark. Anyway, we'll get right to it. So um, we've been well, we've been dealing with this for a while, and it's actually been quite interesting on on the SD card. And there's a lot to the SD card. We've got a bunch of questions that people always ask, and and you know we actually do Google read all the forums and the forums that we own and 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 are part of, and we um, and the in some other forms that we're sort of part of that we just quietly okay sandbag on, I guess to it's a radio term. So. Um, and hi, Alan. I, I forgot to post a few things, but I'll, I'll click the highs in a minute when I introduce Dan. So without any really further ado, there's a lot going on with the SD card and the subsystems on the radio. So we thought we'd go over them. So uh, where do you want to start, Dan? We, we want to just start at the beginning when you turn the power on and we have the whole watchdog thing. Sure. Okay. So um, the uh, and, and I'm, I'm speaking uh, of the, the products we call the Deep Eddy products. Um, um, this is the 6600, the 6400 series products. There's a little difference in the 6700 products, which is still um, available, but uh, the 66 and the 64 is what we'll be talking about today, just to be clear. Um, so, um, you know, first of all, when you turn on your radio, you're really not applying power to any circuit Cir you know power has already been applied to the radio uh we, there's a, a pick uh processor in there that it's its function is to do um a couple of things but one of them is to look for a press of the button on the front um on the front panel now if you have a gpsdo installed you you'll you know probably people that have that uh, uh feature will um will will we'll recognize that when they turn off their radio the little you know power button is uh, yellow or something um, um, or blue you know, or blue right and that's because we continually supply power to the GPSDO um, uh, feature uh, so that it tracks all the satellites so that when you turn on the radio it's already acquired all the satellites and it's disciplining um, the 10 megahertz oscillator uh, right from the get-go so so power on doesn't necessarily mean power on. It means it's, you know, a function. It's not, you know, like, you know, pulling power. And that's one of the uh, common misconceptions, I think, of the radio is that what happens at boot? Well, uh, when the when the radio first turns on, one of the first things we do is check to see, you know, it's kind of like doing the, you know, fingers and toes test. When you, uh, you know, when you wake up in the morning, you say, do I have all my hand, you know, my my limbs, fingers, toes. Um, we do a, a very similar type of operation where we check to make sure that we can spin the fan, that the voltage coming into the radio is within um, um, a certain uh, range. If it's above, then we air out. If it's below, we air out. If we can't turn the fan, then we air out. And those are usually conveyed um, when, they, when there are problems, they're usually conveyed back to the operator in form of some sort of a blink code. Yeah, we actually unit. measure the RPM of the fan, right? There's, it's this is why changing the fan is not just changing the fan. There's a whole science in the fans we use related to cost. And Steve's posted about this related to cost, how much airflow per you know per rotation, and it truly meets that number because a lot of Chinese fans say, "Hey, we're going to move so many cubic feet at 12 volts," and it's, they're not even close. So there's right. a lot of math there. Right. So, and it, and the RPM in which it spins is also something that that is graduated as like the PA uh, temperature increases. We you know we gradually increase the fan speed uh, to a, a to a, a high limit. If we exceed a certain RPM um, level, then we error. It's an error. And if we don't meet a certain threshold, that's also an error. So that's the first blink code, and that's one blink one red blink means typically that there is a problem with the fan uh, if you want to see this for yourself 
open the thing up, stick your finger in the fan, <laughs> and, and power up the radio, and you'll see that one blink, fan error, right? Um, two blinks is another one. Now, that, now, this is one that would typically occur when the software has been up and running, the radio has been operating, and then suddenly the software crashes uh, for whatever reason. And we, and that we have a, um, a PSOC or a power control IC in there that monitors as a Watts dog function that monitors to make sure that, uh, um, that the software is running in the radio. If it detects that it isn't, um, it will blink. It'll give you two red blinks for a short period of time. And then, um, the, uh, the PSOC or the power control IC will, uh, literally reboot the radio from there. And that's, I think we've all experienced that. There's lots of reasons that um, that software can crash. Bugs uh, can be, you know, part of it, or operating conditions um, like um, RFI getting into the, um, the uh, into the network line. Uh, if there's severe RFI, then you can create a situation where the software will just crash because it's getting corrupted data through the network and it doesn't know what to do with it. Uh, three blinks. This is the one that. Most uh, everybody kind of equates with having a corrupted or a bad SD card. Well, that doesn't really mean that you have a bad SD card. It just means that the radio has crashed during startup. Uh, there are many conditions that can cause that. A you know after an upgrade, there could be um, a bad file transfer. Uh, there could be something physically wrong with the radio um, um, that. Um, that, you know, during the, um, um, the boot sequence, it's detected and, uh, or not, and it crashes. People who are uh, testing our alpha software have experienced these kinds of crashes before. Three red blinks does not necessarily mean that it's an SD card failure. So that, you know, that's the other thing is that it's really important that when you do have these issues that you don't jump to the conclusion that it's got to be an SD card issue. We did have some problems with the SD card issues, um, with SD cards, and in a minute I'll go over the the whole history of what what happened. But it's not necessarily uh, true that that the SD card has has failed or been corrupted in, in, at, at some point. Uh, four blinks, five blinks, and six blinks on the um, on the right now. Everybody understands what four you know what the different blink codes are. Is that there would be. Act Actually, that's a good point. The button blinks. By the way, here's an SD card. Yep. If you've never seen one, it's pretty small, and they're they're not the ones you get at Walmart. Uh, and you can talk about how they're hardened and where we get them. Um, it's the power button that blinks. Right. Like my printer blinks sixteen blinks when it's not happy with an ink cartridge. And and you'll see you'll see it blink when you're updating software. You'll see it blink when it's booting. It, it, it's a multicolored LED. Um, but red is it typically means that there's been some sort of problem. And the, when it blinks, there's a, a series of rapid blinks and then a pause. And then a, the, the series is generally repeated um, the first time. So you need to count the, um, the number of blinks before the pause. And that's the blink code. Um, there's a um, help desk article up there that, that lists all the different blink codes. Um, you can use that as a troubleshooting guide if you wish, but if you have a if you have a um, um, you know a one two or three blink um, error code, almost always it'll be related to uh, something that you're going to want to get a hold of support for. Now four blinks means that the voltage input to the radio is over 16 volts DC. Oops, that um, didn't work. And um, yeah, you can just, uh, I think it's it, it's called just type in blink codes. There you go. Yep, yeah, there you go, right there. Okay, so anything over 16 volts will cause four blinks, um, and the uh, power control IC will remove power from the radio, and then it'll wait for you to restart. Uh, five blinks is that the current draw uh, from the CPU and non-PA boards exceeds four amps, right? So four amps is the maximum uh, threshold that would, would probably indicate some sort of uh, hardware problem or maybe you installed uh, 
a field installable option incorrectly. Um, and the power control IC will again remove power from the radio and wait for a restart, wait for you to clear the condition. Six blinks is an under voltage condition, and that threshold is uh, currently 7.5 volts. That means that, uh, and that, that, that the result is exactly the same. You'll see that six blink code, and then power will, then the power control will remove power from the radio and then wait for a restart. So Very those are common. The very common in an over voltage set or a over current setting, or if you have voltage drop on your power cord or somewhere else, and it doesn't take a lot of resistance or impedance to, to have the radio drag down and crash uh, Cruddy, when you have full power uh, like RTDY. Yeah, Cruddy Anderson power pole connectors. I mean, there's a, a variety of different conditions that can happen, but and this, we is, always this is why we always ask to read the power voltage at the connector on the back of the radio. That's correct. Um, okay, so so if you get a blink code, the safest, easiest, best thing to do is uh, one, just look up to see what it is, and if it's any of the first um, uh, three or four, get a hold of the support, uh, send in a support ticket, uh, and we'll be happy to help you uh, sort out what's going on with the radio. Um, three blinks can also mean that you have um, there's been some sort of a uh, a crash that is related to um, an, an SD card misread or as people are calling it, corrupted SD cards. So um, first of all, I mean, there's been, you know, there's been kind of a, a small movement out there where people will open the radio, they'll take the SD card out of the radio and they'll put it into an SD card, uh, you know, copier and make it and clone their, uh, their SD card, and uh, can certainly understand why people think that that's a good way uh, to solve a problem like this. But number one, it's a it, it's a by cloning the card is a warranty violation. Um, if we get uh, radio in that has an SD card that isn't one of the ones that we install uh, from the factory or ship, you, know, you risk um, losing your warranty. The other is that you can't just go out and buy any SD card. And I think there's been enough explanation out in the uh, community about this, but we use a industrial strength SD card that is designed to, um, to um, take writes uh, for a much longer period of time than the kind that you can just go off to uh, Best Buy and get or order from Amazon. Um, they perform the same function, but they're, uh, physically different um, uh, pieces of electronics. Um, and they're designed to last, um, you know, for in an industrial setting. Uh, the other the other thing is that, you know, people, you know, I, it, we've, we've seen this in support a number of times is, you know, Joe down the block, down the block has a problem, three blink codes, and then he goes and talks to somebody at a local ham club uh, and they said, well, I'll just make a copy of my card and uh, I'll give you a copy of it and you can put that in your radio. Well, that doesn't work either because each, um, um, the actual license for the, uh, the, the, the firmware that's in the radio is maintained uh, in an encrypted way on the, um, on the SD card. And swapping SD cards is the quickest way to get a bricked radio um, that's, um, that's out there. Um, right. They're paired to your radio. They're paired to your radio. Yeah. So, so we, we recognize that SD cards can go bad over, over time. Uh, we, we have evidence of this. It's not a large number. Um, but it, in the event that there's an SD card that goes wrong, that goes bad in your radio, let us know and we will drop a, um, uh, I won't, but the, uh, uh, but Don Katie and, and her Kathy. crew and yeah. Katie and, and, and Kathy in our office are great about turning those things around and we get them in right away, uh, you know, to, uh, to me. So it's, we, we, we turn them around. It doesn't cost you a nickel. We send you a, um, a self-addressed stamped en envelope to return the card to us. And that's important because every one of those um, cards that comes back in our VP of engineering um, will um, will basically test each one that comes in and uh, to understand what the failure mode is. And we keep we track that here. 
that helps us build, uh, you know, better products and make sure that, that, you know, in our purchasing decision for SD cards that we account for any um, issues that we have. So please don't make a, co a clone of your card. We will replace it. We understand that it's, that, you know, you could be down for a day or two, but we, um, but we really um, do not recommend at all. In fact, it will avoid your warranty if you, um, if you stick a SD card in um, uh, that, that has been cloned from another radio. Uh -huh. um, and then the other, the, the other issue about cloning cards is, is and, and this will, this will be, um, you know, the explanation of what occurred now, prior to about may of last year um we had a an anomalous number of sd cards that would fail um in uh, or have leave the appearance of failing in the units as it turned out when we did the analysis the cards themselves weren't bad but there was the, the data wasn't written in a way um, that allowed it to be read back um um for, you know for that and it, you know, it is something that the engineering team lost a lot of sleep over. In fact, you know, the, the stories that I was told about and, you know, how much effort went into uh, trying to find this this issue, um, it even got to the point where the manufacturer that we purchased the card from, we changed manufacturers. We had shipped them radios. They had had it in their factory. There was a lot of effort that went into it. Well... Um, about this time last year, actually, uh, we were reviewing, um, um, you know, just putting a, a second pair of eyes on it, on the problem. And we found where there was a one bit uh, that configured a pin on a, the DaVinci processor inside of the, uh, the radio um, was initially set correctly, but downstream from that, it was changed in some code that was um, that was added, um, you know, several years prior to that, um, and that one bit change um, put the SDIO um, pin that is normally used to detect whether a card is present or not, and one we don't use, um, in a mode where it could impact um, SDIO operations for the entire radio. It was undefined, and it. Um, once we found that, we fixed it. Um, uh, back in May of last year, we released uh, 3.1.2, uh, which uh, corrects that error. And since that time, the number of SD card failures just have, have fallen off a cliff. So it, 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 it is very clear that, in fact, in our testing prior to release, we, um, we had a way of reproducing these SD card failures and we couldn't reproduce them. So we know it's a solid kill. So the bug has been fixed. There are situations where um, a, um, you know, residual corruption um, exists on the card that, uh, in, in, uh, in, inside if it's not replaced. If you're running 3.18, for example, and you haven't upgraded to 3.112, or you go backwards to 3.1.8, um, you can also introduce that, that data corruption, which can lead to a three-blink um, error. It doesn't necessarily mean the card is bad or it has been corrupted. It just means that during the boot sequence, the radio is crashed, and that could be just caused by a bad read, caused bad by a good read of bad data. Mm -hmm. um, you know, any of those things that could occur. So... Um, and we fixed it in version two as well, and it and does not version, exist. It, it does not exist in version one. Correct. Right. So, so version two, if you're on that uh, uh, version path, and version three, all of those have been fixed as long as you don't go back any further than uh, three dot one dot twelve. If you go back to three dot one dot eight and two dot four up. pre two dot four dot ten pre two dot four dot ten. Right. Yeah. So um, you don't want to run those versions. If you're running them now, uh, we strongly recommend that you upgrade to the, um, to the version that is next uh, in release. If you go to our website, we only keep the current releases, and we've 
removed all of the previous releases that had the SDIO uh, failure Good. in it. So well, that's, that's, awesome. that's, yep. that's the story. And that, that's how we got it. And it, that's been um, 10 months, no, eight months ago since, um, since it's been fixed. So we've been running now for eight months. We've seen the SDIO card failures dr fall off a cliff. Uh, if people are using 3.1.2 or the the latest 2. Dot, um, um, uh, the, the version 2 uh, release. Mm -hmm. So if you're using those releases, then you won't have that bug that in introduced the SDIO IOK card failure. If you have um, a concern about your SD, uh, SDIO card and it's been, you know, you see three blinks, um, that, that have come up or some other anomaly, give our support people a call or um, drop them a, um, a, a help desk ticket and we'll help you solve them. So we have a couple of questions. Uh, the first one is mine, but only because I get asked a lot. Our, a lot of our remote operators, um, we have recommended that in a remote station, we do a soft power down using the RCA connector on the back of the um, radio with a remote web switch. And then we have, um, and by the way, we came up with a really good remote web switch. If you're really thrifty, I'll show that in a minute because I'll reach out for it while Dan answers this question. And then the odd one is, can't I just yank the 12 volt DC power? Um, I, well, obviously I can't do that because that'll corrupt the card and that's really bad news. Um, and it, uh, I, I don't know, Dan and I, we didn't talk about this ahead of time. I like to give them a chance to think about this sort of things, but you know, yes, I think in a perfect computer, I think, and this is my own assumption, Clean shut down at one, turn off the 12 volt power. But that's not, you know, when your full DC power drops for power failure or whatever, is that a risk? And that's the question. I'll let you answer that. And then I'll I'll show the wow. web switch we were looking at. So, you know, you're writing to you're writing to a um um a you know a piece of um, external media. And if you know if the stars aligned when you kill power, it is entirely possible. Uh, although not probable, um, that you know, if you pull it out right when a write is a, it, is occurring, that it's an important piece of da data that um, the radio expects. It's possible that you could end up writing a, a bad piece of data that could result in um, a three bank code. I mean, the chances of that happening are very, very low. But you'd sort of have to be saving your global profiles or change the mic setting and have the DC power to pull at the exact perfect time to have a, right. that perfect storm. Okay. Right. right. But we don't write a light of data to the card. It's it's a it's a read reference device for the most part, I would assume. That's correct, except for profile information. Right. Okay. So the part I was talking about, we did a help desk an article on this. If you're to digress just a minute, is we have um uh, some people, especially in the rest of the world, uh, where you're dealing with 220 volts or other things, we we actually tested these Sonoff four um, relay web cards, that, you know, with you know dry contact connectors on them, and so they're really good for turning on and off uh, your power nicely, and then you can put um, some of their hardware on it to turn your AC power off. I know people are going to ask me for specifics, or you can even make a remote push to talk. Which you know most people don't need, but it's it's handy to have if you ever do a password change while you're remotely away, so that you can re um, create a push to talk episode. You know when we go through Smart Link and that. So anyway, it's on the help desk. That's just a high piece of advertising for this. They're on Amazon worldwide, and they're like twenty bucks or thirty bucks. They're not perfect plug and play. You're gonna have to read something. We don't support it from a perspective that will help you with it, but uh, there's a lot of community support about that. So, and then I'll post this other question from um, Dan Trainer regarding mean, mean time between failure. And I don't think we come close to it, right? Uh, no, it's like, um, I don't know, measured in eons or something like that. I mean, it, it's a, um, it, it, SD, SD card media is typically done in cycles um and i i, I don't um i don't have the uh the, that that stat in in front of me but it is way up there um if that's important we can circle back and get that um that information but it this is know, not an it, this is not this problem it's not a mean time between failure issue it, at all it, it is it is not a mean time failure in fact 
um, all of the, uh, w with the exception of what, when there's been a hard failure in a, in an SDI card, in the SDI card, we've never seen one that has come back with anything more than maybe just a few percent of its uh, life um, used when we've measured it. Okay. So here, it, good. And Here's I'll, another I, question. I'll, I'll let you answer this one. Oh, are there SD cards in the 6500? Yes, there are. And in the 6700. And the 6300. And the 6300. Okay, I have another one here. Um, and I'm, I, Dan, you don't have to go into detail on this, but I'll just answer this because people have read it. And it's from um, Martin. It was, um, and his is one of the corner case ones. So we're not going to go into depth on them. There are, it's a little window of some other strange stuff that happened that affected a few radios. And sadly, I think you were lucky. So Tim explained this one at length to me this morning with that so, date frame. So sometimes um, um, we have um, um, radios that have some sort of anomaly that we didn't catch in the manufacturing process. Um, and I believe Martin years was one of those cases, but it wasn't, although it may have manifested as a uh, three blink, uh, uh, code and maybe even the first time it went into support, I think, uh, you, you may have been treated as such, but I think, um, I'd have to go review your case specifically, but, um, I think it was, um, 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 let's see, Martin is also run 24 seven. Yeah. Okay. Oh, so yeah, mine's been up since 2013. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I run 24 seven. I have, I have three, uh, uh, two that I own and one that I, um, that the, the company owns that I, and I, and they're on 24 seven okay. here in my shop. And I see Martin and, uh, is, is a student of, uh, David and Alan's here as well of, uh, our node red no group. No so, red. Yeah. Um, I think we sort of addressed this question, David Backman. I don't know if you were around in the beginning and if we didn't, but let's touch on this again. No, so the um, uh, we we do not allow flex uh, users to flash their own SD images if they fail, uh, for the simple reason if they fail and you try to clone the card at that point, then you're just cloning the failure if it is a failure, uh, and the other that it's a uh, uh, it is considered part of the radio and it is uh, a, a warranty violation if you do. Right. Now, these SD cards we've talked about, in our, and Dan said this, I'm just going to repeat how critical this is. This is the same technology that is used in the uh, healthcare world, in the aircraft world, commercial industry. Uh, this is not consumer grade stuff. This is, you know, well thought out uh, stuff from uh, that, you know, because we obviously wanted the reliability we have. And um, he did say there was a lot of people that lost a lot of sleep on this, trying to get down to that one bit issue. And for which, um, you know, it's sort of hard to talk about while it's going on. And, and we generally, we don't. So this is actually probably the most, um, um, do, you know, open discussion we've had on it. Um, Martin, I'm, I'm not going to bring up your thing, but if you want to email us, uh, you can email me at, or Dan, Dan at flexradio.com and he'll talk about your issue one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, so yes, David, the, the rate is actually low. It's like anything on the internet. You know, you go look at something and you see 17 or, or maybe 200 people complaining about it, but you don't know how big the install base is. Is it a hundred people? Well, 20 out of a hundred is a lot. 20 out of 3000 or 20,000 is very little. So you have to keep that in mind. And so that's the big unknown. And we tend to complain about something. Yes, I went through that with a, something else today, not even related to radio much more before we, we, we post praise or I love my radio or whatever. So keep that in mind. So yes, it's, it's manageable and it's low. Yes. L more than we want, more than anybody wants. Believe me, we want to make this go away and we're, we're getting there, but some of it has to work its way through the install base. Any other questions? It's like a, a perfect. Oh, what did, well, okay, I'll thanks. post this one. <laughs> thanks, thanks, David. Yeah, they all. Uh, everybody works really hard to try to do their best for you, and every other customer out there. 
you have no idea how I wish I could post all our support tickets so everybody could read them. You know, the good, you know, the mostly good and even the bad, but um, uh, that's a good question. You don't. I mean, it usually means a road. It's going to mean a, if the radio doesn't come up remotely, you're on a road trip anyway. It's like the repeater not coming alive. Um, and so um, somebody else said, uh, Bill here says, I actually do this with one radio, but I would I just leave the radio turned on. Um, you're probably okay. Uh, it's uh, it's we don't say yes or no on it because we've never in order to truly say if this is the right answer, you really need to put it into stress testing, right? And we we have not stress tested that to do that. Okay, we're radio on for twenty minutes, kill the DC power, bring it up again, and twenty minutes later kills you know, and then come back in a year and a half and see what happens. Right. Anything you want to add on that one, Dan? No, but I, you know, I use a shorting plug uh, here on my radio because I want to um, make sure you know I we get the um, I'm I'm on a battery backup here for um, I have a UPS system that I that, that the radio is connected to, but you know the other day we had a four hour power outage and if that happens when I'm not here. Um, you know, I don't, I'm going to look at one of those little, uh, remote control things, but that shorted plug on the, uh, remote on, uh, connector works every time. And I've never had a problem of the radio, not coming back up, um, uh, coming on. So Bill's been doing this for, was it Bill? You said, Hey, four years. Four so years. there's part of a stress test. Okay. Here's one more question. Uh, I lost it. Uh, if you do something, by the way, if you do something like that, make sure you assign a static IP address to your radio. Um, or, um, because in my experience, sometimes it takes longer than, uh, just a minute or two for the cable modem to wake up. And, uh, if you're, if you are using a cable modem router, you may not be able to get an IP address by the time the radio is booted. Yeah. I've done the thing. I'm going to talk to this one. Um, there's a whole document. Go to the, I'm going to, I'm not even going to bring it up because I'm going to make you do some homework. Go to the support site, search on, you know, this power up sequence. We have it well documented on the proper way to bring up an M model, uh, if you're having problems and, uh, Arnie, yes, uh, this is, and I'm going to say sadly only Wi-Fi because I would prefer to plug it in, but fortunately it's low bandwidth. And, um, I have not used it in anger, meaning it hasn't been installed in my remote for a whole winter and that's when I tend to bless things, but we've got other people that have been playing with it. I think, um, Lou who's on here N 2 tu said he used one. He said it was great. Um, this is one of our advisors actually. And, uh, and so, um, yeah, he's good to, um, uh, comment on that. So I think it's, it's, you know, for the money, I think it's probably a reasonable investment. Anything else you want to add on the M model startup? And by the way, we're assuming you're not using an M model, in a remote situation, less casually as well. But uh, even if you are, uh, because you're away for the winter, um, yeah, you, you're going to want to DC on, essentially DC on and wait what, some period of time, and, and then the remote rest of the boot up. Dan, on the MNL startup, anything else you want to add? Nope. I don't, you know, I, um, uh, M model uh, startup best thing to do is read that document and just follow that procedure. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. The best. There's a whole network inside the, the radio, like the, the panels actually like as well. It's like a maestro. It's, you know, you could, you could sort of maybe if you could yank it off and put it back on it, you would have a maestro sort of maybe, but not really, but you get the idea. Um, Bill, just search on sawn off and uh, actually go to the help. Um, Go to the website, go to the support at flexradio.com and search on it. You'll find it. We've got it all written up for you. Everything's there. And uh, then there's a model number and pictures and you can search on Amazon. And because we're worldwide, I've, I didn't really want to do that because uh, I'll bring up my Amazon. It'll be Amazon Canada. We have UK customers. I found it in UK. I don't know what the EU Amazon site is, but somebody else can check. Uh, standby current consumption on the radio. Um, Depends on the... Uh... I don't know if you have a, a GPSTO uh, installed or not. Um, it, if it's just stand, if it's standby in waiting, it's uh, around 200 milliamps, something like that. 
150 yep. to 200 milliamps, very low. It's under 500 mils, I think, the last time I measured was about five years ago. Is it microamps? No, it's going to be, you know, planned for for that much. It's, you know, et cetera, with the, so. Well, I can look right now. Um, with the GPS DO and mine is in standby, I'm right at two, uh, 200 mils with the GPS DO. So it's probably 50. Be Ish. under that, right. I've got a 66 sitting there on my bench, so, and I'll actually, I'll move it over to the other power supply and measure it, so. All right. And Fred, uh, we talked about that, so you may want to rewind if you missed it, regarding the DC on all the time, RCA jack, uh, which Dan does. You're probably okay, but back up about 10 minutes. And we, uh, If you missed it, have a playback on that. If you're really not sure, you can email me, uh, email info at flexradio.com, and uh, if Dan's not listening, you can email him at his personal email address, but which is really, <laughs> really complicated. It's Dan at flexradio.com. Right. Um, you know, and I, and I, and I, I actually, I'm so impressed because of the company. A, we pass out our personal email addresses. We don't generally hide behind that or our phone extensions. And B, I, the emails I get from people are unbelievably good. So thank you for that. And it's not abused. So if you're in that industry, it works. Perfect. Well, Dan, thanks very much for taking time out of your day. I know, I know you had your head down in something and, um, and, uh, and his wife is lets him out of his garage once in a while. Yeah. yeah, When, um, you know, I had, uh, uh, I have cable TV issues right now uh, in my house. And oh, I was going to bring that up. (laughs) You were. Yeah. yeah, the, the other night I was sitting there d- eating dinner. When my, my wife and I were watching, I don't know, whatever. But anyway, all of a sudden I heard this clink clatter and she had launched the remote control um, across the room and, and just said, okay, you need to fix that. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so. you know what it was? He turned into a customer this morning on a call. I don't know why I found it so funny, but we told him to get rid of his, his modem, his com- combined modem, and he'd ordered... You know, we like the PF Sense routers because, the, and they're not consumer grade; they're professional grade. So I don't recommend them because you really have to have some education to play with them. So he puts his modem in bridge mode, and it doesn't really do bridge mode. So, right. so anyway, he had to. You ordered another cheap one, I think. So I ordered another modem. All right, yeah. ladies and gentlemen, thanks for your time. Have a All great right. day. Stay safe. Hopefully, you thanks get vaccinated. The they're great.